Hello, I am Michelangelo Maglaque, a registered psychometrician, and I would be your instructor for today for the subject of Introduction to Psychology, and the topics are Sensation, Perception, and Consciousness. As we meet our daily activities in life and we are exposed to a variety of stimuli, this stimuli that impinges on our sense organs and our experiences and them as factors upon our behaviors, actions, and thoughts depend. It is obvious that no action will occur if we do not have some contact with the world outside ourselves. And responding to and dealing with the world is wholly dependent on the process of sensation and perception. Sensation is receiving the stimulation through our sense organs and perception is becoming aware and interpreting the stimulation. While many psychological phenomena such as learning, personality, emotion, and social behavior are, are affected by and also follow many of the rules of perception. And therefore, it is important to know the sensation and perception for us to understand behavior and psychological processes. Let's first discuss perception. Well, perception refers to the actual experience of the world. It is the process by which the brain interprets and organizes the information received by the sense organs. The perceptual process depends on the sense organs and the brain, and the sense organs receive the stimuli from the environment, transform them into nerve impulses, transmit these nerve impulses to the brain, and then the brain interprets the stimuli. Well, our perceptual field is the most fundamental fact in, about our world. It is that it is divided into figure and ground, that which sticks out and that which is background. Well, this division is partly the result of a deliberate process of attending to those portions of our environment rather than others. And attention is a process partly under the control of external stimuli and partly internally controlled. By changing our attention, we can determine which is to be the figure against which is or which all the other stimuli are the backgrounds. There are certain principles of organizations of perception. Well, a group of German psychologists stated the basic principles of organization in perception, and that group became known as the Gestalt psychologists. Well, the Gestalt psychologists emphasized the importance of form in perception and they took the point of view that shapes and forms need to be described by the organization of entire perce uh, perceptual field. They formulated a number of descriptive principles of perceptual organization and some of these just thought laws of organization are the following. We have the proximity and resemblance. These are the things located close together in visual fields that tend to be grouped together. Well, proximity is the basis for the compelling organization and proximity also occurs in auditory experiences in the form of temporal grouping. Well, regular repetitive sounds become grouped into rhythmic patterns, such as grouping is essential both to speech and to musical motif. Well, objects are also grouped by resemblance. Well, repet uh, repetitive patterns resolve themselves into a group of figure based upon the similarity among the parts. The other one is the good form, and good forms are determined by innate organization in the perceptual system. Well, the Gestalt psychologist listed a number of criteria for good forms. These are the uh, continuation. Well, as long as the eye can easily sweep along a line, continuation exists. We also have the symmetry. In simple forms, one part is the mirror image of another. And the simplest form is the circle, which is not only symmetrical but is everywhere the same. We also have the closure. Well, this refers to a tendency to complete a figure or to perceive a figure as closed or completed even though bits and pieces of contour are separated from one another. Uh, well, the other principle of organization is common fate. Well, common fate is like the principle of similarity except that it has to do with motion. It is the tendency to see as one things or events moving in the same direction. 
drill teams and lines of high stepping chorus girls are uh, aesthetically pleasing because whole subgroups do the same thing at the same time and there is order in the group well uh, another concept in uh, sensation perception and consciousness is attention uh, it is the perceptual selectivity well we are bombarded with a number of stimuli we cannot attend to all these stimuli and we have to select the stimuli that we could attend to depending upon our goals, interests, needs, and values. Our brain makes the selection of the stimuli which will be given focus and attention. Attention is the process of focusing our consciousness to a certain stimulus to the neg uh, neglect of others. While we do not know how selectivity operates, there are some experiments in physiological psychology which suggest that there are some brain centers for attention. And these brain centers control how sensory information is relayed to the cerebral cortex. While attention is also affected by some aspects of stimulus such as intensity, size, location, color, movement, and novelty. Intensity refers to the strength of the stimulus such as loudness of the sound or brightness of a color. A person who would like to seek attention of a group speaks very loud. Advertisements of certain products in newspapers and magazines and televisions carry bright colors. Size is another important factor in attention where tall candidates in a heavy beauty contest, in a beauty contest catch the most attention among the judges. Or, a big apple among small apple is more, deli uh, more pleasant and delicious to eat. Well, big capital letters are used in big billboards along the highways. And the location of the stimulus is another factor to be considered. Well, big posters of advertisements are placed strategically where there are plenty of people passing by. Attractive and contrasting colors are used to catch attention among advertisers. Mobiles used in advertisements are more likely to attract attention than stationary ones. And blinking lights on Christmas trees and lanterns add meaning to the Yuletide season. The novelty of unusualness of a stimulus call for attention than what is common. Well, we also have these errors of perception. And there are two general errors of perception. These are the illusion and hallucination. Illusion is attributing qualities which do not belong to an objective reality. We have optical or visual, auditory, olfactory, tactile, and gustatory illusions. Well, in hallucination, there is no objective reality. A person tends to perceive the smell of a burning candle when somebody dies, multicolored stars when under the influence of drugs, or a mirage when thirsty. Well, consciousness, while perception and sensation are major determinants of behavior, alterations in the state of consciousness can also have profound effects on behavior. And these altered states expose us to experiences and behaviors vastly different from our experiences when we are awake. Among these states are sleep and dreaming, hypnosis, and psychoactive drugs influence. Well, in sleep and dreaming, sleeping patterns in human beings seem flexible, but once a pattern is established, it can be difficult to adjust to a new pattern. And there are stages of sleep which range from light to very deep sleep. Sleep is necessary for the normal functioning of any animal. And sleep deprivation can produce extreme reactions, but people seem to be able to recover quickly once they get some sleep. Well, dreams occur during the REM sleep or rapid eye movement sleep, which is characterized by high mental activity and extreme muscle relaxation. And psychologists believe that everyone dreams but some people do not remember their dreams. And there are three important aspects of uh, Freud's theory of dreams. Well, according to Freud, dreams are manifestations of hidden conflicts, desires, and unconscious impulses. And also, dreams consist of manifest content and hidden content, but more important, the latent content. And dreams are wish fulfillment. 
Well, dreams can have content of unconscious origin and represent wishes, but sometimes they are manifestations of conscious fears and desires or mere random association. Well, hypnosis has some of the characteristics of both sleep and wakefulness. The following symptoms can be produced under the hypnosis, which is heightened suggestibility, acceptance of distortion, selective attention, acting out of suggestions, distortion in the individual's bodily state, and post-hypnotic amnesia. And um, it is almost certain that only cooperative uh, subjects can be hypnotized and the available evidence suggests that people cannot be made to comment while aware. There are also certain hypnotic uh, phenomena. Well, among the hypnotic phenomena is catalepsy. It is a muscular loss of control in which the subject's limbs remain in any position they are placed in. We also have these hallucinations where auditory, tactile, and visual, either positive, that is seeing something that is not there or negative, denying the presence of something. We have anosmia, loss of sense of smell. Subject may not smell ammonia or may tell you it smells like whatever odor is suggested. Well, we also have this age regression. The subject can be made to act and feel as though he has regressed to an earlier experience or he went back to an old or past experience. They can also uh, experience amnesia. It is spontaneous. The subject has no memory for part or all of hypnotic sessions or suggested. The subject is requested to forget what has transpired. We also have this hypermnesia, which is heightened recall. Analgesia, analgesia or reduction in pain. The distortion of body image. The subject is made to experience a separation of mind and body. It can also be used as anesthesia, which is a reduction in sensitivity. And uh, hypnosis is also a distortion of time uh, perception, where the passage of time can be subjectively altered through suggestions. Well, it is also important to take note of the different effects of psychoactive drugs. Well, psychoactive drugs alter moods, emotions, perceptions, or thought processes. And psychoactive drugs fall into three major categories the depressants, the stimulants, and hallucinogens. Well, depressants, these drugs include alcohol, barbiturates, narcotics, and minor tranquilizers. And these reduce the activity of the central nervous system, slow down reactions, reduce the strength of response, and produce drowsiness, sleep, or even death, depending on dosage. Well, two depressants have become serious social problems, alcohol and heroin. Well, alcohol is the most widely used psychoactive drug in our society and many people are addicted to it to the point where they suffer actual physical reactions such as sweating and tremors if deprived of the drug. And psychotherapy and some form of aversive conditioning help in curing alcoholism. Well, Alcoholic Anonymous, an organization composed of ex-alcoholics, provides a form of therapy based on group support plus a type of group therapy and confession. While heroin is the cause of great misery, serious crime, and many deaths from overdoses. Addiction to heroin is both physical and psychological. Like other narcotics, heroin is very useful in relieving pain and at certain dosages produces a feeling of well-being, freedom from worry, acceleration, and even extreme physical pleasure. Continued use of all the uh, narcotics and barbiturates become addictive and users experience withdrawal symptoms if they do not get it. Well, the addiction of to heroin is both physical and psychological. Therefore, successful treatment must include both physical and psychological approaches. One method of treatment consists of maintaining the addict on heroin or on a substitute such as methadone. While this does not cure the addiction, it eliminates the need to obtain the drug illegally and allows a gradual controlled reduction in dosage. Well, stimulants is a class of drugs that includes caffeine, nicotine, amphetamines, and cocaine. 
Stimulants produce reactions opposite to those of the depressants. They increase central nervous system activity, speed up reactions, and produce a feeling of lightheadedness, alertness, or even euphoria. Well, stimulants have the positive effect of improving performance on many tasks and keeping someone awake when required. On the other hand, the continued use of stimulants leads to a cycle of arousal followed by depression when the drug wears off. And this produces increased dependence on the drug to avoid the depression, making larger and larger doses necessary. Minor side making uh, effects, uh, the minor side effects include restlessness, anxiety, and irritability. And in the extreme, extended use of some stimulants can produce a state of severe mental confusion and a dis oh, uh, disorder similar to psychosis. Well, um, hallucinogens are various plants such as the tropical morning glory, the uh, psilocybin mushroom, and the cannabis hemp contain hallucinogen, uh, hallucinogenic substances. Others such as LSD-25 have been produced uh, synthetically, and although the effects of each drug are somewhat different and the dosage requires varies enormously, they all can produce perceptual and temporal distortions, a sense of being detached from the body and a variety of mystical experiences. Subjects who have taken LSD, one of the strongest hallucinogens, have reported that walls seem to be breathing, floors moving and flowing. They see multicolored designs moving even with their eyes closed and objects flowing around the edges and music appearing. In addition, uh, subjects report that their souls left their bodies. They were floating in space. They had peculiar uh, sensation on their skin. They become uh, another subject or another object or person. Their body grew in size and their body parts paralyzed. Well, hallucinogens produce distortions in perceptions and thinking. And these distortions may be pleasurable but they may also be upsetting and frightening. Dangers include legal problems, overdose, negative psychological effects, and antisocial behavior. Well, marijuana, marijuana is usually uh, considered to be in somewhat separate class from other hallucinogens. The resin of the hemp plant cannabis satiria contains hallucinogenic ingredients, the THC or tetrahydrocannabinol which is the active ingredient in both marijuana and hashish. Well, marijuana is a mixture of dried stems, leaves, and flowers, while hashish is a stronger concentration of THC obtained from the flowers alone. Well, the effect of marijuana are usually feelings of well-being and calm, sometimes hilarity, increased appetite, some perceptual distortions, and in extreme cases, hallucinations. Well, that wraps up our topic for today about uh, perception, sensation, and hypnosis. Uh, I hope you learned something. Thank you for watching. I'm not requiring, but I hope you would subscribe for more lecture video presentations. Thank you, everyone.